Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Today we are going to continue our Rise of the Robots campaign where we are as always trying to beat legendary Iron Man difficulty permanent dark events with only sparks and psionically active characters. It's time for N11 enemies, uh, elite officer, lancer, oh yeah, sector pod here, a lot of elite troopers, heavy mechs, andromedons, couple of beefy characters, uh, mostly uh, however humanoid characters and then there is an extremely powerful and dangerous al uh, alien which I think is probably the um, uh, the Archon Lord and that by itself is already stretching it quite a bit so let's take a look how we want to approach uh, this beauty of a mission I definitely want to take both of the both of the Teplars with me because they need experience. Renman is a good choice as well, but if I take both of the Teplars with me, we cannot run three of our mechs. So maybe we're switching it up a bit. Maybe it is. The combination that I mentioned a bit earlier, where we are having like two Psyops, uh, two Templars, and two Mechs. I uh, just, my OCD prevents me from allowing such a loosey goosey organization. So uh, let's do it this way here Psyop, Psyop, and we got. Vector is the prime spark. Good. Now, since we already have all of uh, them ready to go, how about we're going with a shredder gun, six to nine points of damage. Sounds about right. What is his plasma doing? Seven to ten. Uh, let me just double check something real quick, shall we? Six to nine, but shreds, and here we're looking at, yeah, more damage and a bit broader, a uh, bit broader radius. Good. So make utility weapon, uh, utility items available and weapons. Like mentioned beforehand, we're going in with uh, two mind shields. These guys will take care of it. We're going to take uh, blue screen rounds. And I'm thinking, do we need a second blue screen round? I uh, do we need a second mimic beacon rather. Okay, the game froze for a second. So let's go with really solid weapons here. We're going to go for another beacon just in case. Roby has the second beacon and more blue screen rounds. And I think we're going to take the superior repeater here. Okay, is that a setup which I can get behind? Let's see. We got a lot of psionic abilities. We got two times stasis, so that should uh, make for a lot of uh, just crowd control without mimic beacons. We got two mimic beacons. I must say that probably due to kind of uh, the lack of space, we're a bit a bit limited with our mimic beacons, and maybe going for blue screen rounds is the wrong. Um, uh, the wrong decision here since we got so much firepower anyways might as well better to not uh, go for blue screen uh, blue screen rounds maybe it is better to go for that uh, double mimic beacon set up here and instead we're double mind shielding I like that setup almost more because it seems cleaner these guys are complete uh, completely or nigh completely immune to 
physical and um, and mental impairments we got um, enough just back up here and in case we really need it the shredder gun is probably a good substitute for blue screen rounds and vice versa mm, let me just do one thing just from a logical perspective i think if uh, Roby is rocking the blue screen rounds, might as well give him the gun which hits better, so has the superior scope. And Renvin here takes the insta kill repeater weapon. I like the idea of having two pretty solid repeater, uh, superior repeaters, or just looking for another scope, and then this weapon here would be also pretty much decked out. Yeah, that looks like a team I would like to take onto a mission. Got a nice set of skills. And I'm curious to see how uh, the two mech sort of setup will work. Let's go, guys. Let's go. All right, and we landed. So let's take a look. It's, as always, a non timed mission, which is great for us. And our strategy will be very similar. We're going to abuse this beautiful, beautiful high ground up here to our advantage. Really no need to rush or anything. Only got two mechs. Feels a bit different than the few missions beforehand, where we always had three mechs, right? Good. And Glaive can act as a nice I comply. distraction for most of uh, the guys here. Plus high ground for our Templars. So that's an Overwatch. That's an Overwatch. Vector has two times healing. I don't think that two points of damage really warrant a lot of healing. And I just realized that I've put my microphone away from uh, me, so I hope that the sound was good. Anyways, back to the mission. So, we got double high ground here, which is fantastic. High ground on over high ground. Good. Magister moves over there as well. Oh, he takes a full cover right there. And you know what? Renvin just joins him. Already got a couple of really good abilities. I love the idea of domination. Null lands. We just got non upgraded um, Psy adapters, that's all. But as soon as that changes, rest assured, these guys will be even stronger. So I don't see any reason not to really start this out. At least pretty soon. And Andromedon usually does not come alone. Pretty bad positioning, by the way, here. I messed up the positioning. The tree blocks the, the mech because it cannot take cover. That just means it's a vision impairment. It's all right. We're not under time pressure. Small movement mistake, nothing major. Good, let's wait for the rest of the pack to come up as well. Clearly can hear the sector pod and since shit is breaking up uh, here. There we go. Guess what, two down and we haven't even started the encounter. Nice, that's an execution right from the get-go. Oh, 
Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. That is definitely a great start. Let's start just hitting it a tiny bit. Yep, that is good. And let us take Patrice here, aka Magister. Give him the killing blow. And that's two focus for him right away. Getting him to max focus. Ooh, I see, since he does not have the ability uh, to leave focus by himself. That means he can also not collect these. Interesting, I've never played with two Templars in one mission. There is another enemy right down that alleyway. It's uh, Advent commander might as well we'll take the opportunity here to advance the fire line just a tiny bit good we got three overwatches going that's more than enough Edwin decides to not move into our proximity. I guess that'll be okay. Okay, Let's move up the fire line just a tiny bit. This here might as well trigger, so we're not going to do anything about it. This here should be fine. Good. My senses are keen. Overwatch mode active. Come get some. My senses are keen. We're green to go. Reloading. Because it's a perfect time to do that. And the Overwatch trap just sprung. No enemies left or right. I can also not see enemies here. So whenever you see the Overwatch animations, it's a great time for you to uh, really scout the background here and see what else is up. Because it's a moment where the fog of war is lifted for once. Elite Lancer dies just like the rest of his friends. Glaive moves up, and guess what? We're having probably a perfect fire line right here. If, if you say so. Lots of high ground, uh, full cover mostly, and a very no tight down. setup. Knowing that there is not much around, and that we're only looking at 11 enemies, um, four of which we've already killed. I was about to say we should move in, but that's when the next patrol just continues to move into our line of fire. How unfortunate. That's a solid hit. So, let's just use lightning hands to get rid of the overwatch. Thank you. Well Secondly, uh, let us kill this guy. Patrice is moving in. Thanks to undying loyalty, we yet again have an enemy standing. Did I mention at some point during this run that that is one of uh, the most annoying 
dark events and if you have permanent dark events it is the most annoying buff that that the enemy can take okay that's a full shred like it That's just a superior repeater. I think uh, this here is where we have the blue screen rounds. Yes, that is where we have the blue screen rounds. Well, on the positive side, this should give us yet another uh, focus. Okay, there's nothing back there. Interesting. No need to move up yet. We got momentum available, we can easily move out of it. But it's good to know that there is a tower indeed. Ready and waiting. Good. How do we want to deal with a tower, really? Affirmative. Probably that bombardment should be an adequate means. Like this here would be an easy kill for it, right? Right. Let's do the blue moves first, see what we end up with. This here is blue screen rounds. We're still keeping a pretty tight formation. Good. Let's see if we can kill the tower without expanding any of our sweet sweet resources the answer is yes thanks to blue screen rounds and how about we're just reloading for now overwatch overwatch and overwatch not the best overwatch we have pretty weak overwatch um, overwatch weapons Given where we are and that we just reloaded. To be honest, you know what? I'll I'll do another reload. This is an autoloader, so we don't need to reload. Just because there is no need to really rush it. Let's think about what we've killed. We've killed two plus two plus two, that's six, plus one, that's seven. So there are four enemies left over, one of which is the sector pod. Sector pod usually comes with three to four um, additional soldiers. So that's the last pack, short of an uh, dreaded enemy. So we're carefully advancing. Just want to make sure. Menace one five, you're near the target position. Good. That looks fantastic. Again, advancing carefully. Both of the frontline fighters certainly should advance less carefully. But when we're really fighting against um, an alien ruler, I think it's prudent to stay just a tiny bit further back. Even got the teamwork here in case things are going sour. I wish we had dominated someone, but it is what it is at this point. So, that's Overwatch. Over 
Good. Got a pretty fair fire line here. If something is triggered, we would be in a decent, if not good, position to deal with it. I'd like to continue moving towards the target. Just so happens that we're that we're triggering the sector pod and all of his crew in one go. Interesting. We can uh, deal six points of damage, or we're going to move in and overdrive. And this here, why is it causing friendly fire? Who? Kidding me? Oh wow, are you for reals? Okay, that is poor. Good. That was unfortunate. I, I learned something again. Didn't have that plasma um, weapon with uh, an expanded uh, breadth. And now we do have a problem. We do have a pretty substantial problem. Houston, Mayday, Mayday. Yes, we do have a problem. One of those oh shit moments where you are hoping that things are going your way. Good. So, how about... How about, first of all, getting rid of all of his armor? That seems like a decent idea. Good. This here achieves two things as it removes his armor and at the same time hopefully destroys a lot of the cover. Good. That's gonna hurt. Can already see it. Uh, is Storm immune to explosions is the question. No, Patrice was immune to explosions, of course. So it's going to hit us pretty nasty. I want to get out of uh, this, so let's make sure we're moving far enough in so that we're not affected. Shut down for one. That's unfortunate. All right. We got everyone watching, so might as well start with uh, shredding him further. He took some damage from Bladestorm, uh, just for full transparency. He 
is he immune to stasis? I don't know, but we might try. He will probably slam him in the uh, into the ground. Okay, so that worked like a charm. Before we do anything else, I would like to place a Mimic Beacon here. We'll not do much against the Chosen. Um, not the Chosen, the... Uh, the Alien Ruler. But I just realized that it actually takes him out for an entire turn. That's fantastic. Good. Blast away. Let's get these guys. Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Ooh. Teamwork into a domination, which hopefully works. Nope, that did not work. Too far away for a null lens. Uh, all we can do is overwatch at this point. Can certainly hit this guy and the sector port. And thanks to our blade storm, that actually should be enough to kill them. There we go. We can stay here and parry. And we can at the same time move to here. And that'll kill this guy. Okay, in terms of the Chosen, I would like... Um, I'm always saying the Chosen, it's the alien ruler. I would like to overwatch and wait for his stasis to finish. There was a chance for a repeater. Boy oh boy, they are doing a lot of damage. Thanks to Bladestorm, we just dealt with the rest of the team here. Thanks to Undying dying Loyalty, they just won't fall. Can only hit two of um, either of these two. It's unfortunate. You know what we could do? I, I still don't really appreciate that whole setup here. We have another stasis. Oh, Roby does not have stasis. Hmm, okay. Was nowhere about that. But he has the repeater. And that means there is a chance uh, that this guy here soon is going to bite the dust. 10 points of damage. We're at least starting to deal the respective damage it's now going to land fantastic that's a great start by the way
to deal a lot of damage to it and at the same time trigger blade storm because he will get a turn or not okay so he's now stunned what can we do in order to deal even more damage to him Only 76% uh, uh, to kill, uh, to, to deal damage to him. Don't like the odds of that. Oh, let's double up on, on the blade storm. Can, can we reach him? No, we can't. No, we can't. Oh, that would be so priceless. Rushing there and then he moves and bam, bam, double blade storm just in his face. <laughs> wow, that would be that would be godlike. Okay, we can't do that. Uh, what else can we do? Archon King. This would mean he is starting to flee. I think that's not a generally bad idea. Let's do that. He's stunned for one more round. And boy, oh boy, we're getting some really good hits in. Rage Strike should be a free action and not something that'll t uh, that will reduce his, his timer. That is correct. Gotta love the free actions, baby. 8 to 10 points of damage with a 15% chance to kill him or 100% chance to deal null lands damage. I don't think that the repeater will work. I mean, 50% is totally nice, but eh, chances are low. Gotta be honest there. Yeah, let's take the null lands. Minimum damage is a bit disappointing. going to get one more attack got to deal with the sector pod afterwards uh, because well, that guy does not look happy either It's kind of a compromise sort of deal. So he's immune to explosions, might as well move up so that Blade Storm kills the thing. Um, I think the his explosion cannot be uh, cannot be off uh, set with parry. Lightning field also can oh, wow. Wasn't aware that the lightning field actually deals so much damage. Got another nice Alarium core. You 
just gotta love the sectopods. Okie dokie, so how about... Getting everybody um, kind of clustered up here. End the turn. Why is there still an alien activity around? Thought we had killed every single one. Currently there is still a pack left over. Good, that was the Archon. Learned a couple of things. So number one, Stasis, fantastic. It's an absolute game changer against the alien rulers because it actually lasts an entire round, no counterplay allowed. Still remains uh, the by far strongest crowd control in the entire game. So I very much approve that. Second thing that we learned is uh, you can fiddle a bit with his action economy and the Templars were able to use the Blade Storm quite well. Unfortunately we didn't get a repeater proc so we couldn't immediately kill him. But I think we got him down to one and a half kind of bars of um, health. Which means since he's fleeing again once you um, reduced him to another half of that it should be relatively easy uh, to kill him the next time until then this uh, mm, was an okay mission good we're landing Let's see did we get a promotion no and i am happy to see that the gravely wounded portion for magister is only nine days that is not too bad Good, one more day until the infirmary is ready. That was a pretty smooth smooth mis mission, all things considered. Yeah, why not? Let's get some more Illyrium. Do we really need that though? I would probably say, wait, 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 wait. I would probably say it's better to install a radio relay somewhere. For instance here, and then finally get greater resolve, which is a nice bonus. Alternatively, think this here is only 80 intel can make contact immediately perfect and integrated warfare means all pcs's are updated so let's install a radio relay here and get the entirety of south america that'll give us access to two further facilities nice roby get some Good training. I like the health portion. I definitely like the health portion. That'll help him in the absence of not having med kits. Infirmary is something that we need to do soon as well. Just getting rid of his fears. There we go. Okay, perfect. So, infirmary. Let's get a couple of things uh, sorted out number one healing plus hundred percent number two yes we're going to put uh, Roby in first oh no it's not uh, Roby but it is uh, um, uh, I think that is quick set not sure whom did we just put in there 
yeah quick feet perfect yeah we put quick feet in there uh roby once he has finished his business would be a great candidate as well and primarily hogbite would be a good candidate although since we're no longer taking hogbite onto the actual missions might not be important enough three days to get even more intel like that we're short on contacts so one of the things that we might want to consider is getting more contacts as well in the meantime we got an interesting mission unknown enemy that could only mean we're having a gatekeeper there scientist plus 100 intel well, sounds like a good mission. Uh, we're going to do that in a, uh, in a second. Very soon we're being ready with uh, the covert action to finally get access to the, um, uh, the Chosen, the Assassin. Once that is done, we can also assault her lair. I'm looking forward big time for that. Sparks require some Re repairs but i think overall we're fine like although this year says a lot of repairs eh, i don't um, i don't think that they have lost too much hit points now nah, they're still fine they're still fine good lightly wounded well uh, it's probably going to be an interesting mission because we oh no we do have one ta uh, templar two psi operatives and we can take all three sparks into it the repair of the sparks definitely uh, proves challenging if you have multiples of uh, them but uh, to my understanding heal faster also means repair faster you can correct me uh, if i'm wrong with that but uh, that would mainly solve this issue by the way we're almost done here so training center is uh, the next um, building and then we're done with our build overall with regards to research only a few very few autopsies are left we're going to get those quick and once everything is researched we're trans um, transitioning into the shadow chamber to get uh, that golden storyline uh, mission going i am not sure if i am going to kill all three of the chosen um, like i said i it just so happened that we've uh, started with the assassin so that's potentially one of the things that we're going to do i am not sure if we really need to kill all three of them the warlock is a prime target for me but i also don't want to stretch this campaign uh, too long overall i uh, i really like the idea of building it up at some point though you're pretty pretty strong and we've almost reached this point once the psi operative soldiers have even more abilities that's pretty much game over um, we the, the only saving grace so far was that they don't have a great psi amplifier but with two mind controls per mission uh, two times stasis and uh, a lot of damaging abilities cover starts to be less and less important and they can very much handle the whole uh, the whole non-mechanical side of it and if if you give them blue screen rounds they are even so so much so rounded that they can deal with all of the mechanical ones as well good this brings us to the end of uh, this episode thank you so much for watching as always if you enjoy the content hit that or smash that like button and um, also leave a comment down below and we'll see each other in two days from now bye bye